All right, here's a moment from Schitt's Creek that probably swelled your heart to a medically concerning size, or it's about to. You're simply the best. Better than all the rest. Better than anyone. Anyone I've ever met. And I'm stuck on your heart. I hang on every word you say. Tear us apart. That's Noah Reed there. He plays Patrick on Schitt's Creek, the guy who gets married to Dan Levy's character, David. But now that the show is over, he's serenading the rest of the world. He has a new album out this month, and he joins us now. Noah, how are you? I'm pretty well, Tom. How are you doing? Well, I know you want to look ahead and move on, but I'm not going to let that happen. I got to ask about uh, the finale of Schitt's Creek. Really beautiful moment, Patrick marrying David. What was it like filming those last scenes? It had to be pretty emotional. Um, it definitely sort of surprised me how how we all responded to it very emotionally. And it, it felt like the the finale itself was split up into a couple of shoot, shooting days. One was at the end of our sort of studio block where we shoot everything indoors. Uh, and that we shot the wedding at the end of that studio block. And then the last day of shooting was at the motel and every cast member was in and, uh, that made it really real that we we all knew we were sort of, you know, actually saying goodbye to this show that had become such a meaningful part of our lives. And uh, so that was, that was, <laughs> I've, I've never seen anybody as emotional as Dan Levy on that day, I don't think. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's, Schitt's Creek is, is unlikely in a lot of different ways. Like it's unlikely, and I know I might get fired for saying this, but it's unlikely that a Canadian show becomes a major success. And equally, it's unlikely that a character can come in late in the series like yours did and really sort of win over people. And I think that it's also unlikely that, that a moment can arrive the way it did. Like when you sang your cover of Simply the Best, you know, the Tina Turner song. Because you're simply the best. It wasn't just like a moment for the show, but it became sort of a moment for television. When did you know that had become such a big moment, and, and why do you think it was? I don't know. I, I I did have the sense on the day that something special was happening. I think it's pretty rare that in a in a TV show, in a scripted, you know, half-hour comedy, there are these moments that really cut through the comedy in a in a kind of a nice way in the setup of that narrative and how David thinks it's going to be terrible and is he going to be embarrassed and then it turns out to be this very heartwarming thing but I, I couldn't have anticipated that it would become um, such a, a an anthem of love for people and particularly people in the LGBTQ community I get messages about you know people using it as their first dance at their weddings, and I, I could never have imagined that, but I couldn't be happier to uh, to be a part of that in some small way. I understand that you're grateful, and I think that's a given. Is it ever a challenge, knowing I as I know you as a musician, is it ever a challenge when people would come to your concerts and people would hear your music? And, and sort of expect maybe something from Schitt's Creek or maybe know you from that more than, more than others other than the songs you write? If they're coming because they know me from the show, then I have an opportunity to introduce them to another side of myself. Um, and, you know, I, I, on, my, on my first time out tour, I had been playing uh, Simply the Best as an encore. So I, I make them listen to all my music before I'll play the song that they likely know <laughs> and have come for. Um, but... Uh, I hope that people, when they come to the show, they're like, oh, cool, and, and this is different, but it's related, but it's, you know, they, there's something else for them to engage with. Are you able to write music during this time? I don't know. It's, uh, you know, there's, there's blessings and curses to this whole thing, and so a couple of songs have come out of it that I'm, I'm happy about, but I don't want to be releasing strictly COVID-related material after all this. I think we're going to be kind of <laughs> sick of it. <laughs> you look so good in your mask, baby. <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm excited you're going to play some music now, especially for folks who haven't heard your, your great music before. You're going to play Hold On. Can you set it up for us? Yeah, well, Hold On um, was a song that I wrote uh, when I was in Los Angeles shooting a TV show. I had just moved into my Toronto apartment where I am right now um, with my partner, Claire, and uh, we hadn't even unpacked yet, and I had to leave, like, you know... It, the next day kind of thing. And, um, and so it was written sort of in isolation and, uh, and 
you know, when this whole pandemic uh, happened, I thought, well, actually, there's some similarities of, you know, the, the feeling of uncertainty and that the notion of just trying to hold on and hang in there until, you know, until it feels better and it feels different and inevitably it will. Noah, nice to talk to you. Uh, take care. Thanks very much, Tom. This is Noah Reed performing Hold On. Well, it's hard to hear yourself think about the noise on our street. It's hard to cool down and your body just generates heat. It's hard to write songs when you feel like you can't even speak. And it ain't hard to tell me you're the only thing I need. And I'm tired of sleeping alone, I'm tired of waking up here. And I'm tired of suppressing these same unexplainable fears. Tired of believing I wasted my formative years But with a hand on your side of the bed I remember the words that you said And honey, it ain't hard to tell me whose voice is in my head Thanks so much to Noah Reed. He's a handsome fella. He can write a song, and judging by that, he can take care of a couple of plants too. All right, Terry Crews started as an athlete, then became an actor, and now during the pandemic, he has a whole different job. Stay tuned after this. <laughs> 